Hello folks, it's Dave Burrows, Barometer Capital Management with the December 2017 year-end update. Uh, most of you know that Barometer has been quite bullish equities over the last three years, really since the beginning of 2013, uh, and we've come through this year, I think, with very strong market conditions. Uh, we believe that we started a new bull market because we exceeded the highs from the previous bull market in 2000. We started to see earnings multiple expansion, and we started to see falling correlations or very clear themes emerge as leadership in a revaluing equity market. This was a lot like we saw in the early 1980s, which lasted through the 80s and into the 90s, and a lot like what happened in the early 1950s, the last time interest rates started to rise and markets rallied through the 50s into the middle 60s uh, on a string of very consistent upward moves. So let's talk a little bit about where we think things are going from here. So much like uh, in the early part of the 80s and the early part of the 50s, we've seen steady improvement in breadth in U.S. markets. By that I mean the percentage of stocks participating in the rally has slowly been expanding. After a brief correction in 2015, we saw breadth start to improve in February of 16, and since then, fairly steadily, the number of stocks participating in the rally has been expanding, which just simply means more money is being brought to bear in equities and more and more companies are participating. In fact, since the 1950s, there has not been a significant correction that ever took place while breadth was expanding. So today we're sitting with about 64% of all U.S. equities participating in the rally, which means it's a broadening market, it's a broad-based rally, it's not focused in just a few companies. And since 2016, the S&P 500, the Dow and the NASDAQ have steadily moved higher with, with very little volatility. When there are buyers right underneath the surface waiting for their opportunity, pullbacks tend to be very shallow and this is what happens early in a bull market. People often think low volatility is associated with higher risk periods. In fact, low volatility is associated with high return periods. So let's look at a couple of previous examples. In the early part of the 1950s, the market rallied for a couple of years to get going and had its first major correction in 1954. And then for three years, the market rallied with virtually no volatility in almost a straight up move as people slowly started to believe that the economy may be getting better. This, and, and, and when we look at the, the, the magnitude and put it in real terms, the market rallied for 97 weeks, uh, sorry, 132 weeks, and it rallied 97% in the course of that rally. Now, as you got toward the end of that rally, volatility did pick up, but the market rallied for close to three years before you got the first major correction. In the early part of the 1980s, it was a similar story. You had two years of rally, a short-term correction, and then after that first correction of a new bull market, the market rallied 140% over the course of almost exactly three years. Again, later in the rally, you saw a little bit of a pickup in volatility, but there was still substantial opportunity. Now, bull markets are driven by a couple of things. Of course, you get rising earnings, but more importantly, people start to be willing to pay a higher multiple of earnings as they get more confident. Since 2016, roughly half the return has come from earnings growth, and roughly half the return in the market has been paid for with a rising multiple, people being willing to pay higher prices for earnings as they get more confident. Now in 2017, yes there was PE expansion, but in fact earnings accelerated through the year and earnings accounted for more than 50% of the return in the market. Through the course of the last two years, we've seen very steadily falling volatility, something that's associated with very strong markets. And when you get a structural change taking place, it often benefits certain sectors and hurts others. And we know that we're sitting at virtually a 15-year low in correlation or the degree to which stocks are behaving the same. So some sectors performing really well, some sectors performing poorly. So against the backdrop of those two previous rallies, the one from the early 50s and the one from the early 80s, both early in a new long-term bull market, how does this rally stack up? 
Well, it is up, but it's up 58% versus up 100 and 140% in those previous two rallies. And the market has been rallying for a long time, but it's just not quite two years where both of the other previous rallies were close to three years in length before they were done. So this rally may in fact have some real legs in front of it. And I know there's a lot of doubters and a lot of people who have real concerns, but the fact is we are in a synchronous global expansion and equity markets around the world are participating. Now it's not every sector. There are some sectors that are winning, some sectors that are losing, but there are some very clear winners. So let's talk about technology briefly. This was the first group to turn higher in the early part of 2016. And technology is a broad-based term for a lot of smaller themes. So themes like cloud-based computing, artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things or connected devices, digital advertising, clean energy, uh, gaming and e-commerce, all of them with their leaders. A second group that has been participating in this rally nicely over the last two years is financials. Now Canadian financials have done better than the rest of the world for many years, but in the last couple of years US financials have been taking over. And financials, when I say that, I mean asset managers and capital markets companies, large banks, regional banks and insurance companies. But as much as they've been performing well, when you look at all of the sectors, it is the sector that is least owned by institutions and hedge funds. So rising interest rates, a better domestic economy, this benefits financial services companies. It's a major winner with rising rates and of course with better taxes. The other group that wins because it's a high tax paying sector is the industrials. So we're seeing a couple of things happen here. We're seeing capital spending accelerate as businesses become more optimistic. We see companies that are paying very high tax rates are going to get a tax break and we're seeing deregulation. So within industrials we've got aerospace and defense, we've got transports, we have industrial materials, the things that go into making things. Uh, these sectors are performing really well, especially things like chemicals and timber companies. So when we take the sectors that are leading this market where we see steadily expanding breadth, steadily improving earnings, companies beating estimates and revising estimates higher. They are sectors that include financials, technology, industrial materials. These are the sectors that are highly correlated to rising real interest rates and inflation. So that's a structural change. We've been living in a disinflationary world. People focused on things that acted like bonds and the sectors that are now leading the market are sectors that win when rates go higher and economic activity is stronger. So of course also in that group is the consumer discretionary group and in the last three months the consumer discretionary sectors have really taken off on the back of very strong consumer sentiment. So travel and leisure, internet retail, in fact over the last two months all retail has participated but most importantly the home construction sector. This is probably the most important domestic sector of the US economy because this is where a lot of jobs are created. So the companies that sell materials into this space and the companies that are building homes are seeing very strong demand, especially because when we look at the inventory of unsold homes, it's at the lowest level in 20 years. So you've got improving demand and falling supply. That's a good recipe for home building. So the U.S. economy is in pretty good shape. U.S. equity markets participating. Earnings are following through. But it's not just the U.S. Breadth has been expanding steadily since early 2016 around the world. In fact, if you took a composite of the top 20 equity markets in the world by capitalization, in the past year we've just made new all-time highs. So it's one thing for one market to be performing well, but when one by one developed markets around the world start to rally, we are seeing a revaluation of the equity asset class. So along with the U.S., countries like Japan, which have been in the doldrums for years. India, which is newly unleashed out of socialist government, going through um, uh, changes in the, in the economy, uh, like biometric identification, which are opening things up for financial services and for many other industries. Now, 
equities we're bullish on. The other side of the coin is fixed income, which we are not bullish on. We've seen since 2012 the beginning of rise in rates in three to five year bonds. We're now seeing rising rates in 10 year bonds. And we believe that the lows that we saw in interest rates in June of 2016 were the lows for the cycle. The last time rates bottomed was in the early 1940s and then rates rose steadily until 1980. And when that happened, the 10 year return for the bond market in the 1950s was negative. The 10 years that followed, the return was 1% a year. In fact, in that 16 year period, equities went up over 16% a year while bonds were relatively flat. In the 35 years that followed the low in interest rates in the 1940s, stocks outperformed fixed income 5 to 1. So this could be the world we live in for quite some time. And while I know the market's been great and we've seen lots of new all-time highs this year, when new all-time highs begin, they happen in bunches, as they did all the way through the 1950s and 60s and all the way through the 80s and 90s. So we've seen a strong rally, but there's been lots of strong rallies over time. In black on this chart is the magnitude and the length of the current bull market since the last major correction. And you can see there were several bull markets in the 1950s, 60s, 80s, and 90s that were either longer or had a greater magnitude. When we stack up all of the years for return, you can see on the far right column the number of years where the market was up over 20% is the highest occurrence. And again, when you look at the years that those were taking place, they were in the 50s and 60s, in the 80s and 90s in secular or structural bull markets. So I've had people say, well, it's been a great year. This year must be next year is going to be tough. If we look at years where the market's been op over 18%, the following year, in half the cases was up more than 10%. So we think that there is some room to go. We think we need to know what can happen. We don't always know what will happen. But as it sits today, we know that breadth is expanding. The earnings drop backdrop is favorable. Bull markets don't die of old age. They die because we're headed into recession and there's no sign of recession. When we look seasonally, when the fourth quarter is strong, it tends to be that the first quarter of the new year follows along the same way. We know that we're now seasonally into the strongest six months of the year. If you took every year since 1950 and put money to work October 31st and sold out April 30th, your million dollars, your $10,000 turned into just about a million dollars. If you took the same 10,000 and invested it from April 30th each year to October 31st, since 1950, your $10,000 turned into just about $11,000. So we're about a month and a half into the strongest six months of the year we have very strong conditions. When we look at the sectors that tend to lead in the strongest six months of the year, they include builders, steel, machinery and tools, restaurants, autos, transports, internet, semiconductors, all of the sectors that are leading the market today. So our job, I think, is to have a really broad mandate, but use the tools that we have to focus our attention in sectors and themes and asset classes where conditions are favorable and then staying in them to take advantage of them as long as they go on. The hardest thing in a bull market is to stay invested. Because when you go through a bear market, you have so many scary moments that you're afraid to give back your capital. We watch every day for any sign that there's deterioration in breadth at the market level or at the sector level. But right now, there's very clear themes and it's time to take advantage of those things. If we see changes in leadership, we will reposition the portfolio. As over the course of the year, we've built out our exposure to things like basic materials, which have joined the rally. And if our work starts to point to defense, we will get defensive, as you've seen in the past, either by hedging the portfolios or raising cash. But that's not the case right now. So we want to thank you very much for, uh, for uh, uh, trusting us with your money. Uh, and uh, having a listen to what we have to say 
If things change, uh, we will update. Uh, but between now and year end, I hope you have a happy holiday and we hope everybody has a prosperous and happy new year. Uh, and we'll look forward to talking early in the, in the new year. Thanks very much.